Hello YouTube, Tacoma Comics here, and once again it is time for Pick of the Week. It's a little bit late, but it's not before next Wednesday, so it still counts as last Wednesday. Um, this is Sunday that I'm recording this on, so I'm closer to next Wednesday, but uh, just been super busy. Um, and my back is still killing me. If you've been following me, you know, I threw my back out and did something, pulled a muscle or something. But uh, anyway, let's get to it. Uh, what I picked up this week was the reboot of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, number one, by Josh Whedon, Jordi Belair, Mora, and Angulo. Uh, two weeks on, of course, there's another Batman in my pull list. Uh, guest starring Constantine, this one. Tom King, uh, Jordi Belair, just colors on that. And... Janin artist, I can't remember first names. My apologies. Aquaman, um, the Kelly Sue run. I'll talk about this in a little bit. Uh, they're the artists and letterers and colorists there. I'm unfamiliar with them, that's why I'm not saying their name. Paul Azaketa and Robert Kirkman on Outcast. Uh, yes, it says with Brett Weiser. I don't know what that means. If that's a letterer or the colorist, I'm trying to give. Credit to everybody, um, but sometimes you don't know them. You know the artists and the authors a little bit better. Excuse me. Cover by Bendis and David Mack, number five. Django Fett, written by Jody Hauser. This is a uh, concept design variant, and I'm unfamiliar with the artist here. I'll show you when I open it up in a minute. And Naomi by Bendis, Walker, and Jamal Campbell. So let's get started right off the bat. Um, do a little bit more of a deep dive into this, starting with Naomi. I uh, love this book. Really kind of cool. Um, and I got, a, I think that's the regular, and I really like that variant cover there. I'm sorry, I tried to do this so I wouldn't get glare, but I'm getting glare anyway from the light somewhere. Um, so yeah, I really like Naomi. It's a fun little story. Uh, the only reason I picked this up is because the new Young Justice by Bendis was so good, it almost made my pick of the week. Um, two weeks ago, I think, but this was just really, really good. Um, basically, there's a town where nothing ever happens, but a couple times Superman has shown up to once fight a bad guy and once to um, to clean up after you fought the bad guy, and the whole town's going crazy. Naomi and her friends are texting each other, and Naomi's got this kind of interest. She's like, has this ever happened before? And older people in the town are being kind of cagey about it, so she's like, uh, something's going up. And then they, they cut to a scene with her and her therapist um, where, you know, her therapist is saying this is kind of a wish fulfillment a lot of people have. She's like, you think I want to be Superman, be a superhero? She's like, no, Superman was adopted. You were adopted. This is more about that. Uh, most people forget he's from somewhere else and accepted. Uh, he's a fantasy of every child, especially every adopted child, not to be Superman but to grow up and find out that you're special. And so Naomi kind of gets this little like, whoa, I get it now. Maybe that's why I'm so obsessed with this. But she's going on and talking to her friends, and they're kind of getting over it, and uh, she can't let it out of her head. She starts snooping about more and more, and she finally sees one guy, <laughs> this huge tattooed muscle guy here. D is his name. And she goes and asks him a question. Apparently it's a small town. Everybody knows of everybody, but she's never actually talked to him. And uh, she's like, was there one other time? And she goes, were you there? He says, no, not exactly. And she flips out, like, what happened? And it turns out um, that there was a superhero occurrence. They don't tell us exactly what it's about. Um, it happened, uh, when was it? March 17th, uh, March 14th, 17 years ago. And the last page reveal, she's like, wait. That's the day I was adopted on. And he says, I know. She turns her head really quickly. Um, so they leave you on a cliffhanger. Uh, this is a really good comic, um, aimed probably for a younger audience. This is in Bendis' Wonder Comics um, line. So he's got his Jinx World line and his Wonder Comics line with DC. So he's really got things going on. Uh, I know a lot of people knock Bendis. I think he's a really great writer when he grabs a character that he feels. Um, I think he can do wonders with him or her. Um, I don't think he, he felt Ironheart. Um, I think Eve Ewing is writing her a lot better than Bendis did, but Naomi, he's writing really well, and some of the other stuff that I've got coming up writes really well. Django Fett. Um, this was kind of a surprise. I am an older person. 
So I was seven when Star Wars came out. I know some people call it uh, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, but that's not the name of the movie. The name of the movie is Star Wars. That's how old I am. Um, and so when the prequels came out, I just thought they were horrible. Absolutely horrible. I know some people now appreciate them. Younger people like them. I thought they were horrible. Um, so I don't really pay attention to too much that's going on with them. But a lot of people have shouted out the Django Fett comic as being pretty good. So I picked it up. And it actually was. Uh, Jody Hauser and let's see. Luke Ross is the artist. Um, who did this particular variant? This is Doug Chang on this variant. And uh, Travis Lanham is the letterer. Yava Tartaglia, Tartaglia uh, is the colorist. So, um, you know, it starts out in a, a cantina-like tavern with a bunch of bounty hunters talking about the mysterious uh, Django Fett that they're meeting up with and how popular he is um, and how strong he is and well-known he is and, you know, why they could possibly want him or why he wants them. And he says, well, we've got a job where we need one, uh, five people. And so there's four of them, like five, well, who's the fifth? And he's like, you know, my son right there. So in, instantly they kind of doubt the son can do anything. Um, and then there's some flashback and you see Django with Darth Tyrannus uh, first being given the, uh, the payment basically to clone his body, give his genetic template for the clone. So you find out that he really is, um, that he really is the progenitor of the clone army. But he says, as part of the bargain, I definitely want to keep one of uh, one of the children as my own. And that's where Boba Fett's going to come in. Um, so they go and do this mission, whatever this five-person mission was, to kidnap somebody. Um, but then the three bounty hunters decide to turn the tables. And you see up here where uh, he's got the knives to, to Boba's neck. And he's like, aha. And Django doesn't do anything to interfere. He wants to see how his son handles it. And his son handles it. Um, but first of all, one of the Greedo type aliens is like, wait, we didn't, what are you doing? And they threaten him. Um, so it, uh, it goes back and forth. Boba gets the drop, the drop on them. Um, and then they have to decide what to do. So he kills the two traitors. And then there's the third guy, the Greedo looking guy. I forget what race Greedo is. Um, and he's like, wait, I wasn't part of that. And he's like, what do we do? Dad, kill him. And dad's like, it's up to you. So eventually he decides not to kill him so that people will learn of his reputation. He'll go on. And kind of the last page is, is Django being really proud of his son. He says, you shot well, you trusted your judgment, and you've started building your reputation. So this was a pretty good, pretty good issue. Um, pretty good comic. Kind of liked it. I uh, was not expecting to like it as much as I did. I was down with Django Fett from the Age of Republic line. Um, do -do 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 -do. Moving on. Oh, come on. Spend more of my time doing this with comic books than any other thing. Getting them in so you don't bend the corners. You all know that that's suffering, right? There we go. Next up, um, I'm going to save that one for a second. Outcast. This is a series like Black Science um, that I just wish would end at this point. Um, it's not bad. It was really good at, at times. I'm just not enjoying the mysteries because every time a mystery is unraveled, there's a new mystery, and it doesn't really, really seem to be going anywhere. So, yeah. By the way, that's Elizabeth Brightweiser on colors. There's nothing wrong with this. It's not bad. Um, the the art is stylistic, and they've kept it that same way. They do this thing where they interpose these uh, faces. Sorry, you can't see that. Yeah, they interpose these faces in, in the um, panels. And I think there's another one on the other page. Sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, right there. And it's a cool gimmick. Um, it worked, but it doesn't blow me away. So, yeah, Outcast is one more arc going. Black Science is one more arc going. Those are two comics I'm okay to, to drop. Um, they just don't thrill me anymore. Uh Aquaman. This is a variant. This is Kelly Sue and um, a whole crew who I'm unfamiliar with, so let's give them some credit. Of course, it's not on the first page. There we go. Uh, Ropes and Roca is the penciler. Danielle Enrique is the inker, and Sonny Cho is the colorist, and Clayton Cowles is a letterist. I believe he also is a letterist for, um, for Bitch Planet that Kelly Sue does. So I love Kelly Sue's um, indie work, and I liked her Captain Marvel run. 
I'm not loving this. I'm not hating it. I got the first issue, and I, I liked it enough to want to get this one. Um, but there's much ado about nothing. Um, he makes a bargain with these people uh, to find out who he really is, and they warn him not to do that. And then all the people on this strange island that he's living on turn out to be some sort of gods or goddesses related to the sea. Um, it was okay. It's building nicely. It's a nice arc with... Uh, you know, Aquaman having lost his memory, and uh, they force him underwater. He thinks he's dying, and he's like, oh my god, I'm actually learning to breathe. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool page there. I like that. It was the fear leaving, so it's not, not death coming, it's the fear leaving. So, yeah, um, pretty good. I'm not like, wow, but pretty good. Let's see what this is. Same thing with Batman. Um, I've been a fan of Tom King's run. I know, again, a lot of people don't like it. This one is a little similar to the last issue with Professor Pig. Um, it goes back and forth. You're not really sure how much is memory, how much is things that have happened, things that he's wanted to happen. Um, John Constantine is there kind of acting as his conscience or um, a brain telling him what's going on. Uh, and a lot of this is just his angst over what happened with Catwoman. Um but again, this is a slow burn, um, but it's a slow burn that's not as great as the Professor Pig one was because the action, the art in that was just fabulous. Um, but this one doesn't really go anywhere. I mean, the last line is just another dream becoming another nightmare. Yeah, um, what's really cool in this, though, is the Wonder Twin Powers preview. Wonder Twin Powers looks like it's going to be fun. I love Mark Russell. I can't wait for that. Um, last two here. Cover. I love... Oh, sorry. Let's get this one out of the way. We have Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I love this cover. Um, this girl from Miami in 1979. I think like the hotel where Scarface almost got chainsawed to death. Could be right across the street from this. It just is very evocative. Very well done cover. Um... If you're a teenager or a Buffy fan who's a bit younger than me, you probably like this. Um, I was a huge Buffy fan, but this um, this reads like something I've read before. Um, not treading any new ground. If you're just jumping on the Buffy train, this might be the one for you. You get to meet Giles and Buffy and um, Willow and Xander in the first issue. And it's all good and well and done. Um, but it was okay. It wasn't great. Uh, cover, this is a beautiful comic. I can't wait when the sixth issue comes out. I'm going to do a review of the whole series. Uh, so David Mack on the uh, pencils uh, and I guess coloring. Car oh, oh, sorry, Zoo or Zoo is the digital coloring. It just says created by, um, by Bendis and Mack. Some of the art was by Oming, but some of the art was by David Mack. And Carlos Manguel in lettering. So, um, if you haven't been following it, this guy is using the fact that he's an artist going to all these conventions around the world to uh, work for the CIA. He's got this strange contact, and she's leading him on. He gets him to all these uh, to all these conventions that he wasn't used to being like asked to go to before. And there's a lot of like subtext talking about comics and and the art of comics and about going to uh, going to conventions. And, you know, I love a lot of the art here. It's just really beautiful. Um, and they show some of the, uh, the comics that the writers, who are the characters in this story, have written or drawn or both. Um, and there's this one that's kind of similar to, not really similar to David Max Kabuki, but evocative of David Max Kabuki. So it's like this is a comic within a comic. And there's always a little bit of a connection between what's going on between the uh, young boy in this comic and the actual writer of this comic in the actual story. And if that didn't make any sense, just go ahead and read it. Um, so he gets invited to this major thing. I think it's in Brazil or, or Chile. I can't remember. He meets up with his ha his CIA handler right here. And I love this way they do this like kind of blank here. But then they do show it on, on some page. So it's kind of like this, sorry, from the other side, this here is all building up to what's happening here. It's a kind of cool, neat effect. Um, and she's like, remember that guy who beat the crap out of you last time? And, and, and you uh, told him that he was nothing like Kirby because Kirby would have been beating the Nazis, not beating this guy. And he's like, yeah. She's like, well, he's over there. 
but don't worry, he's not going to beat the crap out of you. We think he's defecting. Um, he wants to work for us, so you got to go meet him again and find out what's going on. And that is the uh, that is the end. And that is you know beautiful David Mac watercolors right there. And you can see this guy's looming large and vicious looking, and he's feeling really small down here. Kind of like shoot, I got to go confront that again. He nearly beat me to death. And then I got to find out you know what's going on. Not a lot of fun. Um, last book was Pearl number six. And right after this video, I'm going to drop another video um, going through the whole series of Pearl because I love this series. Um, but let's take a look at number six specifically because this is pick of the week, not series of the past few months. And come on, boys, get out of this bag. What is Tacoma Comics doing over there? He's squeezing a comic out of a tightly packed bag. All right, so Pearl, again, Brian Michael Bendis this time. Um, it is Michael Gatos with um, Alex Maleev on some of the covers. I don't think on this one. I think this one is Gatos. Uh, this is number six, and things kind of come to a head. I think they plan to end this differently, but um, they it got it's so popular doing another series. So anyway, Pearl um, is an al a rare albino Japanese American young woman who tattooed her skin with an empty gun. So there's no ink in the tattoo gun, but the when she's embarrassed or angry, the flush in her skin brings out the tattoos, and so it's kind of a cool concept. Um, and they could do some beautiful artwork based on that. Her mother was connected to a Yakuza clan, and so was she. Um, they flash back to show her first murder was on some guy who was being aggressive uh, and not listening to no when no means no in the car. She shoots him. It's pretty cool. Um, and then it goes to present time where the whole story is she's supposed to have killed this guy because this guy works for a rival clan of Mr. Mike, who's the boss. But these two um, others here by my hand here and the guy the hat and the other page have also come afoul of Mr. Mike and they've walked in and there's this whole big thing going on. It's kind of like a big showdown. But Pearl and her tattoo artist boyfriend talk their way out of it and kind of get to leave while the big boss takes care of the other two. And she's like, let's just go. And he's like, holy crap, how do we get out of that? And she's like, I don't know. We just got out of that. He's like, we just walked out. She's like, yeah, we just walked out. Um, then she goes and visits her father in prison and she knows something more is going on. So she wants to find out the truth. Well, the truth is her mom didn't work for the Yakuza clan or wasn't connected to or forced to work for Yakuza. Her mom was the actual Yakuza boss. Pearl's like, how is that possible? They wouldn't let someone, a female become boss. And dad's like, no, they didn't let her. She took it. Your mom was one vicious, vicious woman. So... Pearl makes up with her boyfriend. Um, she says she's got to basically go and find out what the heck was happening. And um, she's going to go to Japan and find out um, what's going on. And in the end, you see that one of those uh, other guys, guys, pinky cut off. And her twin sister, his twin sister's like, don't worry about the pinky. It's no big deal. Um, what do we have to do now? And basically, they got off light. They've got to go kill Pearl now. Um, and if they mess up, they'll go and take the rest of his fingers. So that was Pearl number six. Um, a great issue in the context of the other issues, but not a great issue in and of itself. Um, at least it's not going to be my pick of the week. So let's go back through this and take a look at what's going on. We had two Jinx World comics. Uh, Pearl number six by Bendis and Gatos. We had... Cover number five, we had Buffy number one, Batman 63, Aquaman 44, Outcast 38, Django Fett, and Naomi. So right away, pick of the week is not Outcast. Pick of the week is not Aquaman. Pick of the week is not Batman. Pick of the Week is not Buffy. None of those were bad. None of those were horrible. They're just not my picks of the week. Um, Pearl came close. Uh, it's just not quite as good as the other issues. 
Uh, I think because they ended it abruptly knowing that they're going to go further in. So Pearl did not quite make it. This one's going to be a battle between Cover, Naomi, and Django Fett. Um, I think Naomi is a really good read. It just wasn't aimed at me, so it didn't resonate quite as strongly, but I still think it's up there. I'm not going to pick it. By the way, I don't know my pick of the week until I review the comics with you guys, so I'm not like kind of playing a game. I'm really not sure. I could go back and, and wish that I had kept Naomi in there later. Uh, so it's between Cover and Django Fett, and I think um, I like the ending of Django Fett really great, kind of the Django being proud of his son and the way that went. Um, but the some of the bounty hunters were very cliche. A lot of the story is very cliche. I think Pick of the Week is going to end up being Cover number five. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I've done three videos in three weeks of the new year. Even though this one's coming up five days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, set. Yeah, five days after New Comic Book Day, but you still have it. My pick of the week and an amazing series, if you want to go back and get the first four issues, is cover number five. All right, let me know what you think of these comics. Let me know what your pick of the week was, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot for watching.